Now we will talk about the norma verticalis. When the skull is viewed from the superior, this is called as norma verticalis. So when we see the skull from the superior end or superiorly, we will see upper part of the frontal bone, uppermost part of the occipital bone and the two parietal bones on each side. In the norma verticalis, there are certain suture. Frontal bone combined with two parietal bone at a suture and this suture is called as coronal suture. The suture which is present between the two parietal bone, this suture is called as sagittal suture. And the suture which is present between the occipital and the parietal bone, this is called as the lambdoid suture. In the norma verticalis, we can see the upper part of the lambdoid suture. There are certain important points which are also present in the norma verticalis. The highest point on the sagittal suture, the highest point on the sagittal suture is called as the vertex. Bregma is the meeting point between the coronal and the sagittal suture. This is bregma. And lambda is the meeting point between the sagittal suture and the lambdoid suture. This is lambda. The area of maximum convexity on the parietal bone is called as parietal tuber or parietal eminence. This is parietal tuber. So the norma verticalis is composed of frontal bone, parietal bone and the upper part of the occipital bone. There are two parietal foramens two parietal foramens which are present on each side of the sagittal suture. They are mostly present on the posterior aspect. These are called as parietal foramen. If we draw a line between the two parietal foramen and when this line meets the, where this line meets the sagittal suture, this point is called as obelion. So that was the norma verticalis. Now let's talk about the norma occipitalis. This is norma occipitalis. When we see the skull from the posterior aspect, this is called as norma occipitalis. The norma occipitalis is made up of parietal bone, lower part of the parietal bone, the squamous part of the occipital bone and the mastoid part of the temporal bone. It also contains the inferior aspect of lambdoid suture. As you can see, I have already told you, the lambdoid suture is the suture which is present between the occipital bone and the parietal bone. The occipitomastoid suture is the suture between the occipital bone and the mastoid part of the temporal bone. You can also see this in the norma occipitalis or the posterior view. Parietomastoid suture is the suture which is present between the parietal bone and the mastoid part of the temporal bone. This is parietomastoid suture. You can also see its small part in the norma occipitalis. Look at here. 
A foramen is present on the mastoid part. This foramen is called as mastoid foramen. This is mastoid foramen. The important feature which is present in the normal occipitalis is a protuberance. This is the protuberance. Protuberance means the elevation. So, this protuberance is called as external occipital protuberance. The most prominent point on the occipital external occipital protuberance is in your We can also see lambda in the norma occipitalis. Lambda was that point where the lambdoid suture meets the sagittal suture. Superior nuchal lines. This is the superior nuchal line. This is a curved line which starts from the external occipital protuberance and goes downward. The highest nuchal lines are not always present. But if they are present, they start from the upper end of external occipital protuberance and moves laterally. They are about 1 cm superior to the superior nuchal lines. You can see these are highest nuchal lines. That was all about the norma occipitalis.